The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 24th day of January. My pleasure to be here at noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And here at the Tiger Technicians Hour, the Dow is up 77. It had gone 160, 70 points higher. It hit 26,392. Pulls back, it recycled to a leg D in the Chapman Wave. For those of you who know the Chapman Wave methodology, the fourth highest peak, peak D labeled alphabetically, uh, uppercase on the way up, sequentially, the fourth highest peak where other things can happen. We're in leg D. Will other things happen right now? The middle chart is the weekly chart, leg E. On the right is the monthly chart. Did I finish the... Uh, so this is D... I believe that this should be an F in the 120-minute chart, but we'll get to that. Meantime, back at the ranch, this is really what I'm looking at. Within the context of what you can look at at potential market tops, there are a whole bunch of things you want to check off. What I've been looking for and talking about for with subscribers for at least uh, the past couple of weeks has been how the semiconductor index, which led up and down and up and down to new highs and then lows and highs and lows for the last two years. Will that be the precursor? Will that be the uh, penultimate indicator if it starts to fail to tell us that we're getting closer and closer to at least a daily? You know, you can't even talk about this as being a, a major top because we, we're at an all-time high. 25,984 in the Dow is the night period moving average, which has not been broken to the downside since we broke on the upside way back on the uh, back in November uh, and had to go above 24,000 to break that night period moving average. We haven't even gone back there. So one step at a time. So I look at these th uh, three things. I look at news. So far, there isn't any really bad news, but there's a whole bunch of clouds up there that are just coming together. Clouds can dissipate, but they are there. Semiconductor to me is really prime. Number one is we've spoken about interest rates. I'll get to that in a short while, but first let's say that one of the factors has to be the transportation index, which has led the way up as well. Confirmed the Dow uh, to the upside, but is now the IYT down three at 201.42, taking out the left side low in almost like a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside potential lightning bolt pattern. That's that's maybe three or four on the list. They don't have to be, the semis for me are the most important and then all the rest come into play. Um, higher, high interest rates, this uh, flattening of the yield curve, all of that we'll talk about in a moment. But to me, indicators that confirm the moves to the upside would be this whole high-tech S&P, sorry, high-tech SMHs, as well as looking at, let's go to the XLK. XLK, XLK, here we go. This is leg D, had a turn down from being sharply higher to an all-time high, at a high of 69.06. Trading right now, 68.46, still leg D, not a big deal. The nine period moving average is a 67.71. <clears throat> so if the semiconductors are leading the way down, we'll get to them in a moment. I want to do everything step by step. <clears throat> the XLK, which is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, which has led all the way up, still very positive monthly chart, good, a very good candle in the, in the, in the weekly, we need to see this at 68.48 drop at least, now I'm, I'm going to say two points to really initiate a sell signal to sell mode in the daily. But you'd have to see the MACD cross negative. So far, it's very positive. Stochastic's at 96.5%. You'd have to see that go much lower. 
Will there be a rotation? And what I've been saying is that within the context of tops in the market, we've seen that when one sector breaks down, another sector takes its place. Why? What happened here? The IBB down a point at 115.72 in a potential peak E took over as some of the sectors were lagging a little bit. And now what we've got is will the, will the IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech ETF, hold the 113.42 level, nine period moving average, or break to the 112s, which will then suggest, uh-oh, now there's a timeout taking place. So I'm going through this step by step. S&P, let's, let's get these out of the way. S&P right now was up sharply, made an all-time high at, uh, what was that, 20... 28.52.97, trading out, wow, was that 52? Yeah, and now it's trading at 38. 28.38.74, still only a leg E, MACD and stochastic are good. We need to see a close below 28.06. I would actually say a close below 28.02 to really say, uh-oh, now there's a problem. Haven't got that yet. The QQQs, very sharp pullback. Didn't I just do that? Anyway, new high that goes to 100. 170.24, and leg D pulling back. We'll have to see whether or not this takes out the 166 support over the coming um, coming few days. Um, let's look at the IWM. IWM is probably going to be another one of the tells. This is a leg F to the upside. MACD and Stochastic are good. Had a very sharp pullback from the intraday high of 160.63, trading now at 159. So um, let me just finish these up here. I want to go to gold. Gold had a fabulous move to the upside. It up 16 at 13.53. Leg D in the daily, strong leg A in the weekly, and uh, monthly has improved a lot. Silver at this particular point is up uh, 0.52 at 17.43 towards the high of the day. This is very good action. Silver was lagging. Silver is now not only participating, in a sense, it's leading because of the strength that up 3%. Very good. Now I'm going to look at high-grade copper. Plunges. Has a huge... <laughs> I love this. Plunges yesterday. First time it looks like it could close above the nine-period exponential moving average, up 1.165 at 3.22. Unbelievable. It, it just... Huge move to the upside. Let's see where this can close. It'll be the first move above the nine period moving average since the 4th of uh, January. Good. I'm pleased that it's bouncing. Let's go to crude oil. And then when we get back from the break, we'll spend some time talking about bonds, talking about the yields. This is a leg F, I'm calling it for now, in crude oil in the daily. The leg F, I, you know, it has the potential to be an alternate count. F slash B in the weekly. Um, this is good action, up 35 at 64.82. I want you to quickly look at the dollar, poor old dollar. I said Dolly, Vixie, Bondi, and Goldie are the, uh, our key tells here. Dollar's down 78 cents at 89.32. Not good, not good at all. So I think we've covered a chunk. I haven't finished with the TLT. We've got Ben online. Ben, how are you? Good, Basil. Um, well, ben, we're yeah, about so to go to a break. The question Hold on. I have is... Ben, Ben, Ben. Uh, that's fine. We've got a break coming up. I'll talk about yeah. it as soon as we get back, okay? All right, yep. Thank you. Now up 77. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, right, everyone. We're back. Dow's up 68. S&P's down 1. And this is a very good time to be going to Ben in Tallahassee to talk about the spy. Ben, how are you? Good, Basil. Um, so, yeah. You know, maybe this is something today. We'll see. The the question isn't just the spy. It's actually what you feel or what you deem are the critical sectors where you finally get all the ducks you know, lined up, like you like to say, the Ds and the Es. Right. Do you think all those critical sectors are at the Ds and Es, or do you think um, whether it's, you know, the, you know, whatever sector, right? There's the transportation, there's the biotech, right. there's, there's, you know, probably 10 different ones. Of the ones that you feel are more or less the critical ones, do, are they all D's and E's, or are, they, or are there still a few lingering at, at a B and a C? Okay, folks, what, what, what Ben's talking about, I wonder if I don't think I've got that chart up anymore. Let me see if I've got it here. I used a lot of space, so I use that space. No, I don't. Um, I'll get to it uh, in a little while. But basically what Ben's asking is in the Chapman Wave methodology, the concept is to identify the lowest, most identifiable low and merely count each successively high bar. If you look at the, the SPY, uh, S&P, Deposit 500 deposit receipts made a low back in 2000. Was that January 2016? 181.02, 181.09. So it was a January of 2016. And if you count each successively higher peak alphabetically, you've gone to peak A that was made in April of 2016. You've got peak B that was in June, August of 2019.60 back in 2005. Uh, Wait a minute, that should have been, yeah, back in 2016. And then you get just a modest again. All of these are very small little peaks, but there are peaks nevertheless. 240, where did that go? 240.32, March of 2017. And this is your leg D. It's in D that other things can happen. Sometimes it recycles as it did back in the weekly chart, back in, was that? There it is. Uh, back in December, the week of the 22nd, it made a peak at 268.60. Next week was 268.55, five cents lower. But that counts as a peak in my work. And then it extended to leg E. And we've got a leg E potential here in the daily. So what uh, what Ben is asking is a really good question. In fact, a question that I've been dealing with for about the last two weeks and certainly over the last weekend when I went through Oh, I couldn't even tell you how many charts in all different time frames. I even added a whole bunch that I 
I either didn't have any more or I just want to refresh. So I really am, I'm, I'm, I'm quite familiar now with the, the notations in so many of the sectors. What's really important is if I start to get in my key sectors, I don't, you know, if it's, if it's a healthcare, or even if it's an IBB, that just says one little thing. But if you're looking at the, the SPY, which is in a leg E in the daily, with the MACD very strong, stochastic very strong, and on balance volume today, just turning down a little bit, but in an overbought area. Uh, the weekly chart is still very strong in all t in all the um, in all the different technical tools: MACD, stochastic, RSI, MAC, uh, um, um, on balance volume, and then the, the the monthly. All I can say is I want to be very careful. I want to go through this step by step. So. I don't want to say, oh, my God, we're at 282 right now. I can see a crash coming, and the next thing you know, we're going to be at 162. I can't do that. There are so many steps along the way that I have to say 279.94. Let's call it 280. No, I'm going to call it the lower. Let's call it 279 on the nine-period moving average of the daily. We are still three points, almost four points above. If you look at the next uh, uh, moving average, that's the 50 at 277.95, that's that's even lower. I have to go step by step. I haven't even got a sell signal. I'm, I'm relatively confident that all the little ducks are in order for at this particular period for there to be the potential for the daily charts to start to uh, deteriorate. And I think it started today. Um, and I'm, I'll go through the reasons why in a moment. But to answer your question, the key indexes. Now, everybody look at the left side. If you're looking at my charts, left is the daily, middle is the weekly, on the right is the monthly. I want you to look at the weekly. This is a SPY. Sometimes I like to have them absolutely in order. that aren't in order in the Dow and the diamonds. But this is a leg D in the daily chart of the Dow. If you keep looking, the QQQs, and it's a doji candle from yesterday, that could be a silent doji. If there's a deterioration by the end of the day, I said to subscribers, I thought by 11.10 and said it's 12.10. I said if there's a failure, watch out. That's not a good sign. But what we're looking at today, the QQQs, the red candle in leg D. I'm, I'm just for the moment skipping the weekly and monthly because we know those are all in D, E's, and F's. Now I'm going to go to the IWM. What is that? That's in leg E. I'm sorry, leg F. It was at peak E. It made a spike today. It went to 160.63. Let me just change this. So this is, yes, it could have recycled. I'm just trying to be as conservative as I can right now, 160. Right. Point. Yeah, so real, real quick, the uh, second question is, Is it does it hold true for weeklies too, or is it just the dailies you see all the D's and E's? You, no, the weeklies are the same thing. In other words, weeklies and the monthlies. So all I'm saying is that I, I'm not saying this could be a major, major top. What I am saying is for the first time, we're going to be looking to see if there's the kind of failure that drags the dailies down. But the dailies, to get the MACD and stochastic, even here in the uh, QQQs uh, and the IWMs, the, the technicals are still pretty good. The IWM is not quite as good. The stochastic's at 88%. All it has to do is drop to about 156, two points lower, and it'll go below 80%. But what I am saying is because there's been so much strength in the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, and the stochastic in the daily charts, just to get a sell mode, the Dow is actually going to have to plunge maybe three or 400 points before I actually get any signals technically in the daily. That's why when you right. say weekly, what happens very quickly that if the daily does its job, in other words, if it does give a sell signal that goes to a sell mode, very often you quickly move to the weekly chart and say, oh my, now look how quickly we're getting to the uh, nine period moving average. But until that happens, you still have to be a little bit cautious to say step by step. But no, I agree, this, I agree. And for those of for those of us shorting the market, someone needs to make a quick phone call to the White House and make sure there's not a QE4 coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Basil, I really appreciate it. Uh, always great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Always appreciate your calls. Forces me to go dig deeper, but that's the way I'm looking at it. So let's let's follow this theme, folks. So I'm going to go back. So I WM. I, I did. I can't remember if I did that in in uh, the earlier show. The um, Nadex. Uh, uh, binary 
that I did earlier on at 10 o'clock. Let me just do this again in case. Um, oh, yeah, we've done it all. So now what I want to do is to show you the TLT. And this is really key. So in the bull bear binary option hour, what I did is I showed the different, everything was moving higher. And what I said is that the key things, and I spoke to Kevin Hinks about it, I said, what if the semiconductors, the SMHs start to fall, and the uh, transports, even though it's just one sector, the airlines, what if they stop confirming the Dow, uh, a confirmation, it's called the Dow theory, and they start to pull back? Could, they, could that have an effect? And he, he said, yeah, that's what he's looking at, but there are the sectors that you've got to be careful of. Uh, you've got to, and he, too, is thinking one step at a time. Well, let me get back. We've got a break coming. The Dow is now only up 36. The S&P is down 4. This is a very serious day, and I think it has to do with the dollar and the yield. I'll be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Dow's up 34. SB's down 5. A couple of things that I wanted to do. <clears throat> Here's the TBT. Just made a leg C. TBT is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury, uh, treasury bond fund. If you look at this pattern here, you see this lowercase h right here. It's like an arch formation. And you see the cup. When there is a price move, this is a, an observation that I made years ago in terms of chart formations. When there is, an, when there is a price move of this particular bowl formation and the price exceeds the arch high, in this case, is the high of the 27th of October, 
at 3678. If there is a close above there, I prefer to say two closes. It's a weekly chart. I'm, I'm prepared to take one close. But it needs to be a close above. Can't be below. It has to close above it. Go above it and close above it. There's a really good chance, and that recycles uh, the letters. That's a B minus because uh, you're basically recycled here. What would happen if it's in this move, you would get three different things. One is the, the lowercase h that I call the dreaded h becomes a very positive bowl formation or cup formation. I call it bowl because it's taking its time. It's, it's a very smooth. It's more, more like a bowl than a cup. It's deeper, taking a longer time to break out to the upside. But that's so number one is the H is becomes negated because it didn't take out the left side low and it's very positive, but it has to close above the arch high. That is that, I mean, type it in 36.78 because I'll be talking about it a lot over the coming weeks, 36.78. Okay, now what's really important is that in the arch formation, it didn't take out the left side high and it allowed the bowl formation to continue higher, plus it's walking the nine period moving average. This is the weekly TBT. Ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond fund. Now, what's important? So, first is the H, second is the, is the bowl. Third is you've got a buy signal from the shorter term, that's the daily, taking you to a leg C, nicely above the 200 period moving average, sharply above the nine period moving average. And you've got, look, a much higher stochastic in that December low than it was at the September low. You've got this MACD barely acknowledging a down move. It just barely crosses negative, and now it's very positive. So when I'm looking at this, I'm saying there's a good chance now that yields are pretty close. At least it looks like they finished with the Japanization of bond yields that I spoke about for geez, I know, 20 years. I don't know how long. I, ever since I noticed it in when the, what happened in Japan from the 1990, 1990 high. So it's been a long time. Um, and that says that yields could, in fact, but if you're looking at yields, they're still very low, but it's the trend. And the trend says there's a fourth thing, that if in this leg C we take out 3678, you get what's called in the Chapman wave methodology an overlapping wave. <clears throat> that says that the previous peak B that kind of aborted because it fell back so sharply, it didn't go underneath the previous low, <clears throat> but it did pull back very close went to a trough, a gray trough A below that 36.78. It also went to a gray trough B below 36.78. And now it's in gray leg C. The moment it takes out, the moment it takes out 36.78, if it's in leg C, <clears throat> you've got an overlapping wave. What does that mean? It means, <laughs> excuse me, it means that that B gets reactivated and now it is also in leg C. It means that the this late buy mode, buy signal has gone to a buy mode. That becomes a blue C and that says the next target will be the next previous peak on the left side, which would be 3705, the week of the 28th of July and the high of the 7th of July, 3721. So that's what's needed here. It's still a gray leg C potential overlapping wave. It needs to break above 36.78. But all the signs are suggesting there's a really good chance. Okay, I needed to do that. A couple of things, a couple of reasons why. I had a whole bunch of questions about the bonds. I think I've done that. Now I'm going to go back to my triple yield chart because this is what I need to explain. That the, uh, that the Z, the 30-year contract is more related to the TYX yield, this white one, directly related. And that has gone to a leg gray A, gray B, gray C. And that corresponds to what we're looking at in the TLT, but it's the T, it's the 30-year TYX that we're looking at. And that says above 2901 starts this combined overlapping leg C, and that almost always goes to at least a D. And that's the reason why it's so bullish. These technicals that I'm talking about have the potential to um, have more intermediate term co connotations. The tenure 
very sharp at this week's high so far, or just off the high this week, uh, trading very sharply in leg D. And the five-year, the T, the F, FVX, the cyan-colored one, is only in the leg C. So you would get the 10-year a little bit more mature because it's in a leg D, but you'd get the 30-year um, and the five-year still in leg C. That's very bullish for yields. Okay, I wanted to spend a little time on that. Now I need to go to something that I, I was asked about and I, I said I would get to, and that is, uh, so um, I'm not sure, Bobby, if I answered the question, but it does point to yields going lower, and it does, po it does point to the bonds going lower and the T notes going lower and the yields going higher. Steve Rose in the, in the dens uh, talking about the excess reserves in the banks uh, was 2.12 million, so $4 trillion increase in the Fed's balance sheet uh, over half is sitting in cash in the banks. And he says we're, the tax plan just gave us a bigger stimulus than all of the Fed's QEs put together. <laughs> that's amazing. That is really amazing. Um, so that's that's the way bull markets work. They just uh, grab everything they can. Shorter term, I'm very cautious. One of the things I said we would look at is the SMHs. So the SMHs right now were on fire. Absolutely. They were the hot sector over the last couple of weeks, screaming from the 96 level, 95, 96 level to 108.56. 108.56. What was I looking at? Oh, 105.83. I thought those are numbers that were very familiar. Those are the, those are the two bars that made the high back in 22nd and 24th of November in the estimations at peak D. Now we're at D again. Very ugly candle. A very ugly candle, and we're at 106.43, down 0.209. Uh, I, I just uh, for for um, just to, to, to clarify, we we actually are short um, the, the semis uh, right here uh, from uh, early this morning. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, this is an alternate wave count B slash E. And that's in the weekly chart. Why is it an alternative count? It looked, if the MAGD could close very strongly this Friday, well, the week's still young, two and a half days to go. But if it can close very strongly, I'd have to say, you know what, that's really an E, not a B. If the MAGD deflects lower and the SMH is closed closer to 104 by Friday or lower, I think we've set in place the transports and the semiconductors and the bond yields as three out of my four or five key metrics that I'm looking at now to at least say the dailies in all time frames, I mean all sectors are vulnerable. I'll be back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. I was just taking a really big hit from uh, going to, uh, the, to the... Wow, from 170 points higher to plus four right now. s and is down eight. This is a, a, a very significant day. Um, and I made a big deal of, about it for, with my subscribers. And one of the things that we're looking at right here is the E-mini 120-minute chart. See, this is what's nice about learning how to draw uh, trend lines. See this trend line here? Look how this trend line, the 120-minute chart from the 2809 Point five high that was made back uh, at about four o'clock on the 17th of January. Look how all these highs hit that line. This is the Chapman Wave repellent line and, and turned and flipped and hit 28.55.25, trading now at 28.31.50. That is a 24 point decline in, in an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, it's incredible. So uh, be prepared. Whippy, whippy, whippy. And that's what I think you're in for right now. So to answer Ben's question, I think that we are looking at this particular point where you can get a shorter term, a couple of scarce shorter term. The money that Steve's talking about, that can be put to work. doesn't have to be put to work right away, but it's there. And that's why 2018 should still turn out to be a really good year. But I think that we're in for some kind of a digestive phase that gives back a lot of most recent gains to scare the day nights and every, everyone, and then maybe we restart. Maybe it's speed, and we don't use time. Maybe it's time and not, not you know, price. We'll see. Well, I can say this is the time to be really careful. Um, so that's why we, we started to look at the short side. Now, I just wanted to go back to the gold. Um, I want to show you something. This is a leg D. The MAGD is doing a nice little turnaround. This is bounced off the uh, slow-moving average, the, the, the fast, the dying period differential is bouncing above. <clears throat> Stochastic is not that great. It's at 75%. So this move is kind of what I would call an emotional move. It wasn't going to happen unless other things happen. But price is price, and price is an arbiter of a trend. And it made the weekly chart even stronger, because why? It's going towards the magnet now of 1366.90, the high of the week of the 8th of September. That's when the dollar made that other low that had a pretty decent bounce and then gave it all away. Now, a couple of things that I'm looking at. The monthly chart is improving. So I wanted to just throw this in here to say, when I'm looking at the dollar, <clears throat> this 200 period exponential move average in the monthly chart it was resistance for a second, and it would just snap right through it <clears throat> back in 2015. That was October, November of 2014. And then we made uh, highs, pulled back, made a cup, and then a double cup formation. Broke to a new high, peak D. Remember what we always look for, Ds? 
103.82 on the uh, in January of 2017. That's just this past year, one year ago. It was at 103, and now it's at 89. I would say that in one year, we've seen this kind of percentage to the upside, but the last time we saw it to the downside was way back in 2010, from June at 88.71 to the low of 72.70 made back in uh, 2011. So this is something very serious because now we've gone below, this is the monthly basis, so it's intra-month, intra we've gone below this very big area that should have been strong support. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying if in January the dollar closes below 87, that's at the end of January, it's a week to go, <clears throat> we'll be looking at something that says the MACD and Stochastic are very weak and that puts the upside, puts a, a kind of a limit at the 200 period moving average to the 9 period moving average between 89 and 93 is the best case uh, basis. Now, if gold is moving up, if yields are moving up, one of the reasons why I wanted for subscribers in, the, in this broad portfolio that we've got, um, why I wanted to have this kind of a mix. I think maybe I, I, need to, I had a question about it. Would I, would I talk about the portfolio? Well, I guess subscribers have had it for a while. I can do that. Um, the reason why I wanted to mix is, look, we've got General Motors. General Motors should be plunging today. Yields are going up. No, it's up at 77 cents at 44.15. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will, I'll, I'll go through as many as I can of, of the subscribers of what we have in the portfolio. So we're in a 33 level, a 34 level, and it, we've already had a 19% trade, um, and this is a new, uh, the, the core trade is still the one we're in, and that's up uh, 10 points, right? So I'm looking and I'm saying, gee, General Motors is acting well today, but it shouldn't really, but it is. So this is a mixed, this is a bifurcated market. Think of it that way. We're in a steel stock, um, uh, Reliance Steel. Reliance Steel, 91.59, uh, we're in from the 81s. Um, very nice move, 10 points to the upside. This is toppy area. So I'm saying, where can it rotate to? I think steels could pull back maybe less than the others because I think they're part of the infrastructure. Talking about the infrastructure, um, if you're looking at yields, banks. Uh, yields are going up. Banks usually benefit. We're in Bank of America. It's at 31.95. Yes, it's in leg E, bumping up strongly against this, this trend line resistance. But weekly chart is still looking very good, and the monthly chart in leg D is looking good. We're in um, CBI. This is Chicago Bridge and Iron. Look at this move. Just today alone, it's up 11.72. We're in at $17, $17 and one, one penny. So $17 is trading at 21.25 right now. Leg D in the weekly chart. This is part of what I thought it would be the infrastructure play. So I think there is a place. I'm just the only reason why I'm doing this is that I wanted to show you that. You cannot be afraid of this market, but you've got to have respect for what has worked and what might be the new areas to be looking at. Where uh, We have another one. We have CX, which is, uh, is a Mexican cement company, leg E. There it is in, in the daily, um, uh, leg B in the, in the weekly. Uh, so this is a very important phase. Uh, we've, we've got others, but in the meantime, what I am looking at, we are still long the Dow, funnily enough, from 22, we have a position, uh, long position from 22,290. Here it is at 26,200. But we, our short position, this is the irony of what, the way it works. We got our stop, which is a fairly tight stop, got hit exactly to the penny today. And I said to myself, change it for the day rather than add other shorts. It's a real good chance we've got a turnaround coming in two, within two days. Change and I, my rule is don't change your stops because you, all that happens is you're giving away more money because it'll hit your next stop. I can get back in, so we don't get in at the perfect price. We get in, but still a decent price. If we want to go short, we'll see what happens. We can go back in. That was the short term short trade on the Dow. Um, so I think you have to be very respectful of um, the rotational aspect, and that's what I was talking about before. If you look at the IBB, it's pulling back a little bit today, down $1.38, had a fabulous move. 
Will the IBB, one of the ro roll to, go to areas if the market pulls back sharply? Will they say, hey, let's go back to the IBB? It's had a good year so far, certainly from December, from the low in the 100 area to the 115s as it is right now, having hit 117. Um, we'll see. And that's the, the way to look at this market, I think. Be respectful. Don't pat yourself on the back because anything can happen at any point. I'll be right back straight after this break. Dow is down. Achievers rise above the rest, and when they see an opportunity, they take action, massive action. Achievers capitalize on every resource in order to experience success at its absolute max. And on Wednesday, January 31st, from 5 to 6 p.m., I'll share with subscribers of Mastering Probability how to achieve even more success with the extraordinary tools that I use to call the markets. These tools predicted the Ebola 2015 stock market bottom, the December 2017 gold bottom, and why subscribers added to their mining positions this month as well. Learn the pattern that projects the Dow's next upside target of 30,740. Folks, great moments were born from great opportunity. So don't miss this opportunity to take advantage of my 30-day money-back guarantee for mastering probability. All the details are on the homepage of TFN.com. Sign up today and reserve your spot for the ultimate subscriber event. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of The Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back, and we're looking at um, a couple of things here. Uh, the Dow has now gone to a minus 8. S&P is down a, a minus 7. <clears throat> the Comp Index is down 56. So this is, this, this is a serious uh, potential reversal today. One of the reasons why um, I, I mentioned about three weeks ago that politically, and news-wise, it doesn't have to be political, but news-wise, everything imply uh, currencies, uh, all sorts of things, Bitcoin, whatever it is. I'm looking at this and I'm saying this is a period that is fraught with potential missteps. And that's the reason why, even though we're making new highs, the selectivity is really important and the potential for reversals even if they are shorter term, they can be scary in the certain sectors or stocks that are, that, are, that are involved. And that's really what I'm saying. And I have to, once again, I'm going to put up the Dow chart. I'm going to show you how far we have to go down. We're at 26.205. <clears throat> we have to break under 25,969 to actually even touch 
that nine period moving average, which we haven't done since we actually just touched it briefly on the 2nd of January. So here we are to what 20 sessions uh, of trading sessions and, and it's skyrocketing. So I'm saying treat it as one step at a time. Have respect if you are looking at something that you're really positive about. Don't be afraid to put a position on, but put in a stop. Just be careful. Do you want to go short? It's almost the same thing. You've got to be careful because this market just reverses to the upside so quickly. But don't be afraid to do it and put in your stop. Be, stick with it. I. What I was going to do today was instead of using the stop on that down position that we had, I was going to add another position. And then I just said to myself, no, there is a method. If you're wrong, you'll have an opportunity. If you need to short again, you'll have an opportunity. Just go one step. Preservation, capital preservation at this particular time is very important. So that's what I wanted to say. We're about to sign off. So don't forget my opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, you know, we're in many different areas. Just right across different prices, single digits. I had a great move up in the, uh, the gold stock that we have. Um, we're in different sectors. And we started a short position this morning that is up about 7%. So the day's young. Any no matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bag and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.